Hey, this is Kevin from kevinsguides.com, and welcome to chapter 6 of the Intro to Joomla series. In this video, we are going to be going over navigation, links, and menus. So we're going to learn all about how to make menu structures like this, and deal with the menu manager, and how URLs are displayed in our website. Joomla is a little confusing at first when it comes to menu management and how the URLs work and all that stuff. But I believe the best way to explain it is to just show it to you and kind of go from there. So let's take a look at my test site. So right now I have mytestsite.com, not a real website, slash index.php. And I want to get rid of the index.php from the URL. In order to do that, I'm going to go into the home dashboard, global configuration, and then down here under SEO, there's an option to use URL rewriting, and we want to turn that on. When we do that, it's going to say we need to rename htaccess.txt to .htaccess. So we're going to have to go into our server, which in my case, it's a local server under my D drive. But if you are running your website on an actual host, you're going to have to log into your host file manager and change the file name there or do it through FTP or something like that. So I'm in the root directory for my Joomla installation, and I'm just going to rename this htaccess file into .htaccess, and that is all I'm going to do there. Now I'm going to go back to my website, and the index.php part has been removed from all the URLs. So now it's just showing the alias up there, which is much cleaner and easier to use. So if people are trying to get to a specific page on your website just by typing in the URL, it will appear that way. They won't have to type index.php, which could be annoying. Additionally, when your pages show up in search results, they're not going to see that index.php there. They're just going to see your site.com or whatever slash whatever the page is. On the home page here, I have just a few default articles. And we already talked about the menu system a little bit in the last chapter, where we added links to different categories using the menu manager. But now we're going to go into a bit more detail on how the menu manager works. So if we go to menus manage, we can see every menu on our website. So it's possible to have multiple menus if you need different menus for different purposes. And by default, there's just the main menu there. So let's go ahead and click on the main menu. And we can see the properties of it, the title, the description, and permissions and such. That's not too important. If we go back down to the menu and then actually click on the main menu, we can see all the items that are currently in the main menu. The menu management page works pretty much like any other management page, like we manage the categories and articles. We can create new menu items, we can filter our menu items, we can see notably the site and the admin menu, so you can actually take a look at the admin menu if you have a separate admin menu. We're really just going to be worried about the site side of things, and you can jump between your menus using that. This rebuild option is not something you'll probably have to use. Let's take a look at some of the menu options. So if I go to the home menu option, we can see that this is a featured articles page. Its alias is set to home, which makes sense because it's the home. So if I go to mytestsite.com slash home, it will take me to that home page. Of course, it's the same if I just click my site title or home in the menu. It's just not going to have that same slash home in there, but it is the same page effectively. Let's take a look at some of the options for the menu item that I have not discussed yet. 
but go over to the page display tab and we can see we have browser page title and looks like I typed meow in there for some reason so we'll set that to that and page heading let's just type page heading in here page class has to do with CSS we won't have to worry about that and let's see what happens if I go ahead and refresh my test site homepage. Here we can see it now says page heading at the top, and that came from the page display option where it says page heading. The meow for browser page title, that's now showing in place of my site name in the tab at the top. So those are two notable options you might need to change for certain special pages if you want to customize those types of things. Let's talk a little bit more about aliases. So every menu item has an alias, and it is a short form version of the full menu item name. By default, if you put a title in, it just adds a little dash where the space is and makes it all lowercase. The general idea, like if we take a look at Kevin's guides, is to use short aliases that are easy to remember or type. So it might not be like the full name of something. For example, on kevinsguides.com, I have my guides alias for the guides page. And then under that, there's a web development section. Under that, there's a Joomla 4 section. Under that, there's a J4 intro section. And then finally, we have the page that we're currently on, chapter 6-nav. So those are the aliases I used for all those different categories and for this particular page in the Joomla backend. Chapter 6-nav, that is the alias from the content item. You'll notice that we have content aliases under all of our menu, or not our menu, under all of our articles. And these aliases are used if we did not create a menu item. So if there's not a menu item for the frequently asked questions page, it's going to take the alias from the content item first and use that. And then if there is a menu item linking directly to that frequently asked questions page, it's going to override that alias. Let's take a look at the front end. I'll go to all pages or let's say all categories, my pages, and frequently asked questions. You'll note that I do not have a menu item for frequently asked questions. So the alias up here comes from the article alias itself, mytestate.com. We do have a link to pages. So it used the alias from the menu for the pages. And then it took that alias from the article and that became the frequently asked questions. And that's where I am at my website. Now, if I create a new menu item, and we'll just call this FAQs, and the alias will be FAQ instead of frequently asked questions. And I create that as a single article menu item. And we link back to that frequently asked questions page. It's going to go on the main menu. Just save that. Now, if I go to that frequently asked questions page, it's going to take me to mytestsite.com slash FAQ instead of mysite.com slash pages slash frequently dash asked dash questions like it was before. Also note that when I go back to pages and I click on frequently asked questions, because a menu item exists, or frequently asked questions as FAQ, that menu item I just created, no matter where I am on the website, if I try to link to that frequently asked questions page, it's going to take me back to the menu item. So that's going to be like the default. It's going to override any other pages. So again, instead of mytestsite.com slash pages slash frequently asked questions, it's still there. But any of the links I have internally are going to take me back to this FAQ page. Next, let's talk about hidden menus. So say you want to create a menu for some type of site navigation structure, but you do not want them to show up in an actual menu. Let's go ahead and create a new menu. And I'm just going to call this hidden. 
hidden menu for hidden items. And I'm not going to publish this to any module position. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want it to display on the home page. I don't want be, people to be able to just click this anywhere. It's going to be a hidden menu, but people are still going to be able to access these pages. And I'm going to be able to access these pages or link to these pages from other web pages on my site um, using the aliases that I set up in this hidden menu. I'm going to create a new menu item under that hidden menu. It's going to be a single article. And let's say this is the privacy policy. So I don't want the privacy policy showing up in my main menu, but I still want to be able to link to it somehow. I'm just going to give it the alias of privacy, save and close that. It's on the hidden menu. Now, if I refresh my home page, you'll see that the main menu didn't change because I don't have the hidden menu item showing anywhere on the front end. But if I go to mysite.com slash privacy, it's still going to take me to that privacy policy because that is the page I defined in that hidden menu. If I go to pages and click that privacy policy, it's again going to take me to mytestsite.com slash privacy rather than mysite.com slash pages slash privacy. I hope you're kind of getting how the hierarchy of menu items taking precedence over content items and internal links that are automatically generated. Whenever we have a menu item that exists for something, that is the item that will be linked to from other areas of the website. So it might be important to create menu items even if you don't intend on displaying them in an actual menu, just so you have control over this navigation structure for your website. Finally, let's take a look at what happens if I create a submenu item, which I already have here. So I have animals as a parent and dogs as a child of that parent category as a menu item. Um, so what's going on here is if I open this menu item, we can see that the parent item is set to animals. So now the alias here for the animals is animals, and the alias for dogs is dogs. So if I go to mytestsite.com slash animals slash dogs, it takes me to that dogs page. And every time we create a sub item under another menu item as a child, it's going to add another backslash. So right now I have this article called uh, Adopting a Dog. I don't have a menu link directly to this page, but I do have the alias set in the article itself as adopting dash a dash dog. If I create a direct link again, and we'll just say adoption, adoption, and that's gonna be another single article link to that dogs page. Adopting a dog. And the parent of that is the dog's category. So now with the child item, it's a two levels in. So I have animals, dogs, adoptions, actually three levels in. Now if I go to home animals, dogs, and I click on adopting a dog, at the top here, it's animal slash dogs slash adoption. The last thing I want to discuss briefly here is the module settings because site modules are tied to menu items. If we go to the module manager, and I'm going to get more into modules in another chapter, just want to give you a brief overview. So let's take a look at some module positions. Here we have the module positions for the default Joomla template. You can see that there's a lot of them and we can change them and move them around. So some notable ones include the breadcrumb, sidebar right, sidebar left. And right now I am using sidebar right for my login form. Let's just see what happens if I change this to sidebar left and save that. Refresh the home page. 
Now you can see I still have my main menu on the right, but I also have a new sidebar that showed up on the left. So now I have two sidebars effectively. And I would recommend if you're doing this to only have one sidebar, two sidebars takes up too much space and it makes the area in the middle kind of too narrow for your content in general that I, I would say, especially on certain screens. So stick with one sidebar. I'm gonna move the main menu module over to sidebar left as well. Refresh that. And now the main menu and the login form are on the left instead of the right. How does this tie into menus? Well, for menus, we can see that each of these modules has a menu assignment. And it's set to be shown on all pages, no pages, or only the pages selected. So if I want the main menu, for whatever reason, to only be visible on the home page, I can set only on the pages selected, and then I can select the home option. If I save that and I go back to my home page, you can see the main menu is still there. But as soon as I leave the home page, it disappears. And now I do not see that module anymore. That's very useful because as you build your website, you're probably going to end up wanting to use some more modules for different components. They might be tied into other things. There's a ton of different modules that come with Joomla. And again, I'm going to get more into this later. Now let's take a look at the menu module. So I'm going to add a new menu module, and I'm just going to call this hidden to show you how to create a new menu. And we're also going to change this position to the menu position. So right now the menus in the, the main menu is in the sidebar position. But now I'm going to put the hidden menu in addition to that in the menu position. So let's see what happens when I do that. Save and close. And I refresh my home page. We can now see that the menu, which is this position running across the top in the header, now has a link to the privacy policy. If I wanted to put the main menu there, I can go back to putting the main menu on all pages, change that position to menu, save and close that, unpublish that hinted menu. Now you know how to make menus, refresh. And now we can see we have all the different main menu items being displayed on the top instead of in a sidebar. So that's module positions. That's how you assign them to different pages. And that's how you create new menu modules. I hope that wasn't too confusing. I believe I've gone over just about everything I wanted to with this chapter. You can always review more on my website or check out the Joomla documentation. Thanks for watching and have a good one.